We are um, privileged this afternoon to have with me an old friend, and I joked with him that I have to come to here to this interview, rather impromptu interview, to see him. Uh, John, is John Stark, and I'm Jeff Robinson, Senior Editor with the Gospel Coalition. Uh, if you're just joining us, John Stark, he is lead pastor or senior pastor uh, of the Apostles Uptown in Manhattan. John, welcome to the welcome to the uh, the stage with us today, the yeah, live stream. It's really good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you. Well, we have a new book coming out uh, this week at the conference uh, yeah. called Faithful Endurance: The Joy of Shepherding uh, People for a Lifetime. Uh, and of course, the uh, obviously the title is is uh, uh, suggestive that we want to encourage men to stay in the, the ring, to stay on the bull of, of pastoral ministry, if you want to use that, uh, that example. And John has written, uh, contributed a very fine chapter, a chapter we initially, we had to be prompted to leave in because a couple of workaholics are the editors, um, <laughs> on rest. Yeah. John, talk about that. I mean, why do so many pastors fail to see the necessity of rest and even see it as maybe even sort of tacit laziness. I think I think that's my. I think I feel yeah. guilty about rest. Help me, help me, counsel me here. Well, I think especially in our Protestant evangelical circles, where we have a strong sense that we're free from the law, we have a, a great conviction and theological justification for why we don't have to follow the Sabbath laws. But that's all we have. We don't have um, a good sense of what a theological vision of rest is. But if you look at the uh, Old Testament and New Testament, even the Sabbath laws, when God calls his people to, to rest, he's, he's not just doing it as any other law. He's saying, hey, look at my example from creation. I worked really hard for six days, and then I rested. And But... W what happens, I think, for many of us, we, we see rest as either reactionary, I want to, I'm tired, so I need to rest, or sort of um, keeping us from exhaustion. I don't want to be tired, so I better rest. But God wasn't tired. <laughs> when, when he said rest, he says, be like me, rest. But when you look at creation, God didn't take a rest because he was exhausted because he made the sun. And so I was like, right. that was tiring, so I better rest. Or he wasn't thinking, well, week two's coming, and I better take a day off. Right. It was at the end of six days, everything was so good. And so it was a day to, to, to delight and take joy. It was a day of rejoicing. And so then when God says, I love this so much, I want you to do it. Um, we, we respond with, well, here's why that may be lazy. Or here's why I'm free from the law and I don't have to do that. Rather than receiving it as a gift that we get to enjoy a day in the way that God enjoys a day, um, that's just a great gift and we refuse it. We, <laughs> we push it off because one, we find a lot of our meaning and sense of self-justification in our work. So it's easy to, to push that away. Well, tell me, what does rest look like for you? Is yeah. this something you try to do every week, uh, vacations? Tell me just sort of at a micro level and a macro level, what does that look yeah. like? How do, you, how do you try to stay fresh in the ministry? Yeah. Again, I need help with this, so although you're here, brother, <laughs> to help me. Okay, I trust you, so, yeah. so, so get, give it to me. <laughs> well, I, I do think if I'm just following the, the, the divine pattern, you know, if the New Testament says, be holy as your Father in heaven is holy, and one of the ways in which he shows his character where he says, follow my example, is I'm going to work for six days and rest. That's an example for us to follow. Then, yeah, work, work hard. It's going to be hard to endure in ministry if you're not going to work hard. Um, the thing is that we Protestants can work hard. Um, but resting for six days, it does take some preparation. It's not just some laissez-faire you do have to prepare for a day to not work. You have to prepare a day um, to, to not checking email, to not set up meetings. Uh, and that's a whole family dynamic. It's got to be a culture of rest, mm -hmm. not just a, oh, shoot, tomorrow's my day off, and I have all these things due on Saturday. I, uh, I got to work through it. You kind of have to reframe your whole week. And, you know, for my wife, she, she is, she's doing a lot of preparation for that day. You know, it's, 
Um, someone said it this way, you, you got to see rest as so, like an invitation for a friend. What are you going to do when a friend comes? You're going to make space in your home. You're going to make space in your week. You're going to prepare for that friend because you love that friend. In the same way, Sabbath gift is this way where like, I'm going to make space in my home and in my schedule for, for that to show up in my life. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Thank you. No, that, that, is, that is helpful. One thing that I find that invariably kind of impinges on my uh, attempt to rest yeah. is my phone. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there are so many ways to contact me now. There's email. Yeah. There's text messages. There's the Twitter feed, which, you know, you wonder what's going on there. Yeah. Of course, there's Facebook. There's Instagram. There's all these things. How do we... How do we unplug, and would you encourage pastor to unplug and unplug from the phone and all these things to get? Because I find that that makes me anxious. Yeah. And it does, even if I'm taking a day off, I will do that. And it, there's anxiety that's unnecessary yeah. uh, on that day that I introduce into my rest. Right. Talk to me about that. How do we manage that? I mean, there's all kinds of studies now that show that our phones are making us more anxious. Like actual real anxiety yeah. levels are showing up as at higher, higher levels, and I think that's true for for pastors. I, there was a season where I worked by vocationally, as a, you know, I worked for TGC that's for right. a season right. and as a pastor, and so there was a season where working 45 to 80 hours a week, and um, and when I worked now just one job, one as a pastor and just working the regular. 40 to 50 hours in a week when I would oh. set aside that um, I would quit the job for the day and go play with my kids. What I would find is there was this muscle memory in me that would reach for my phone and I would have to, <laughs> is my phone near? Am I, yes. I need to check in. Am I letting yes. someone down? Am I disappointing someone? And that's a real thing. It's a thing. And, and so there, there is in some ways in which you have to discipline to make space for rest. I do think there needs to be a disciplined way in which, I, and I don't think you need to work two jobs for that to be a real dynamic no, in your no, life. That's right. Um, I do think there needs to be a disciplined way in which you set really healthy boundaries where you, you disconnect. And so, I mean, th we're in a season of, for some churches that, that celebrate Lent, um, you know, I, I'm completely separated from social media during this season which is an amazing thing. I, I've read so many books in this. <laughs> <laughs> I am envious, brother. Praise God for that. <laughs> uh, but th I do think there needs to be a disciplined way of, of separating yourself okay. from, from those things. We got just a few, maybe 45 seconds left, so I'll ask, not, try not to ask too profound a question, but yeah. how do we train our congregations oh, to yeah. think about rest for us? Yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that, I, that our church has benefited from is nurturing a, a, a culture of delight and having a, a vision of, of Sabbath that is recovering something of the garden and anticipating something of the new creation. Like that's what we're, we're, we're remembering something and we're anticipating something. And that's, it's not just like, hey, take a day off. It's not a day off. It's you're delighting. Mm. It's a day of joy. You're, you're meant to, everything. you have the theological justification to have the best day of the year once a week. And, and so I think if we can recover that, that would be really, really important. Well, John, this is incredibly helpful. I appreciate you stopping by this afternoon and talking about rest. Yeah. Uh, I need it. I'm going to try to take it to heart. I am a <laughs> tri-vocational pastor, as I like yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, uh, to, uh, I know my wife's going to be happy that we had this conversation. So yeah. the book is Faithful Endurance. So uh, take up and read, and especially... Brother Pastors, read the chapter, John's chapter, a very fine chapter, on rest. Thank you, John. Yep. Appreciate you.